Thank you very much. I am Naoto Nagasa from Tokyo, uh, working on University of Tokyo and also the RECAM. So let me start by thanking the organizers, Professor Ali and the Professor Fatemi and Professor Wu for giving me this nice opportunity to discuss about our recent activities. And also here is a list of my collaborators. Uh, two of my students already left physics, unfortunately. Uh, and also I have a close collaboration with uh, James uh, uh, He, who is now at the uh, uh, university in China. And also uh, Professor Yukio Tanaka is uh, a very uh, strong collaborator at the uni uh, Nagoya University and Shintaro Hoshino at the Saitama University and uh, Rubo. Uh, especially I have a very uh, close uh, collaboration with the experimental groups in Riken and U Tokyo, uh, Tokura's group and Kawasaki's group and uh, Iwasa's group. I would like to thank all these uh, collaborators. So let me start by the idea of uh, chirality. So the chirality is uh, 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 symmetry where you have no inversion symmetry or no mirror symmetry. So the right-handed and left-handed structures uh, can never be uh, overlapped. So this chirality problem is uh, quite uh, ubiquitous. In physics, you have a so-called uh, parity vibration of weak interaction. Chemistry, you have a chiral molecules. In the biology, you have a chirality of DNA. So here is a very interesting book by uh, Martin Gardner talking about this uh, left and right. But uh, uh, we are interested in the physics, especially we are interested in the uh, flow of uh, uh, particles. So in that case, new symmetry is relevant, namely the time reversal symmetry. Suppose you have this uh, asymmetric potential, V of X, and consider the scattering problem. So when the particle is uh, incident from the left, you can define the transmission and the reflection uh, amplitude, R and T. And uh, uh, when the uh, particle is incident from right, then you can define the transmission T prime and the reflection amplitude, R prime. So uh, in, in spite of this asymmetry uh, between the X and minus X, so the uh, transmission probability and the reflection probability are the same. So this equation, equality, comes from the unitary nature of the S matrix, right? So this one is equivalent to the conservation of the probability amplitude of this wave function squared. And then in order to have a non-reciprocal response, this means you need a dissipation and some classical nature which originates from the coupling to the heat bus. So then uh, you have a dissipation and uh, uh, somehow the time reversal symmetry is broken in the statistical way. And also once you have a time reversal symmetry for the microscopic Hamiltonian, then this uh, T prime is equal to T. You have additional constraint coming from the time reversal symmetry. So note that this, uh, uh, this equation does not require any time reversal symmetry of the Hamiltonian. So then uh, there is uh, two sources of the asymmetry between the T and minus T. So the one is a microscopic time reversal symmetry breaking by the external magnetic field or magnetic ordering. And the second one is a macroscopic irreversibility associated with the dissipation of energy or diffusion. So uh, non-reciprocal response is uh, often related the two of this uh, asymmetry between T and minus T. So let me start by the normal state. And the uh, time reverse asymmetry of the microscopic dynamics gives a uh, uh, so-called on theorem. So this uh, sigma mu nu is a uh, uh, conductivity tensor, including the dissipated part. And then uh, in the presence of the time reverse symmetry, 
uh, time reverse operation, B goes to minus B, right? And the K is uh, going to minus K, but the omega doesn't change. So this is a famous uh, Onsager's uh, theorem for the linear response functions, right? So for example, if you break both the time reversal and also the uh, inversion symmetry, so you could have so-called the magnet chiral optical effect, namely the diagonal part of a direct function contains a term uh, k dot b, right? Actually, this happens in the electromagnet in multiferics, where both the time reversal and the inversion symmetries are broken. So up to now, we are talking about the linear response functions, but now uh, we can give a very interesting and heuristic argument by replacing this uh, uh, momentum K by the current. So the idea behind this is that once the electron flows in solids, then the momentum of electron can be replaced by the current. So then uh, this leads to the so-called dichroism of an electric current which he called the magnetochiral anisotropy. So this is a cartoon for this effect, namely depending on the direction of the uh, current, so the resistivity differs. So the R plus I is different from R minus I. Yeah, of course, if you are talking about the linear response, uh, the direction of the current doesn't matter. But once you go to this uh, uh, nonlinear response, then this uh, resistivity, effective resistivity, which is defined by the voltage nope. drop. What? Okay. So the uh, defined by the oh, drop. Concentratie for this presentation. Okay. Huh? Sorry. Um, I think, uh, professor. I think it's unrelated. Yeah. Please, please just continue. <laughs> okay. Sorry. <laughs> no problem. So this uh, resistivity uh, resistance can be uh, expressed in terms of uh, magnetic field B and also the current. Especially you have a gamma term, so-called. So the gamma times the magnetic field B and I. So uh, this represent the magnetochiral anisotropy. So actually uh, you can calculate the uh, uh, nonlinear conductivity in terms of uh, electric field and the magnetic field. So uh, this one can be translated into the second term, namely the current proportional to B times E square, right? So from the theory, you can calculate this alpha, right? Then you can translate this alpha into this uh, coefficient gamma. Actually, uh, the reason why you really need the time reversal symmetry breaking is the following. Uh, even though you break the inversion symmetry, such as uh, polarization like that, then time reversal symmetry dictates or uh, have a constraint of the energy dispersion between the K up and the minus K down, which are uh, connected by the time reversal symmetry. Then as long as you are talking about, you are interested in the charge transport, then you sum up over the spin. And then the uh, right and left direction has the uh, equivalent. So that's why there should be no non reciprocal transport. But under the magnetic field, for example, along the y direction, then this uh, band structure will be distorted and the uh, uh, asymmetry between the x and minus x appears. Then you could have a, a non reciprocal uh, transport or a magnetic chiral uh, anisotropy along the x direction. So uh, this is a typical uh, Rashiba uh, Hamiltonian systems. So based on this idea, uh, we classify the non-reciprocal response into the four, uh, four categories, according to the uh, time reversal unbroken or broken, and the linear response or non-linear response, right? And actually this uh, magnetochiral anisotropy belongs to this class. But the note that uh, even without the time reversal symmetry breaking, you could have a nonlinear, uh, non-reciprocal response, uh, which includes the shift current 
and nonlinear hole effect and PN junction, and also the uh, Josephson junction sometimes so shows the non reciprocal response. I'll be back to this issue later. Okay, uh, for this particular materials, actually, uh, we can calculate this uh, non reciprocal transport by the Boltzmann transport theory, uh, which is very simple. You can expand the uh, Fermi uh, distribution function in terms of dielectric field. But the important point here is this uh, gamma value coefficient of this uh, B times I is independent of uh, relaxation time in the single uh, relaxation time approximation. This is quite similar to the whole coefficient. So that's why this gamma is uh, somehow intrinsic variable, intrinsic quantity to the band structure in the presence of the spin orbit interaction. So here is a, a Rashba Hamiltonian, and lambda is a Rashba coupling, and we apply the magnetic field along the uh, B direction, uh, Y direction, sorry. And here is a comparison between the theory and the experiment. So this uh, black curve is a theoretical uh, calculation. So without any fitting parameters, because this material is very well studied uh, in terms of uh, angle resolved photo emission spectroscopy and also the first principles calculation. Then uh, we took the values from those uh, information. And then uh, we have uh, uh, some uh, uh, theoretical curves like that. And then here is the experimental value, including the uh, uh, absolute value. We have a very good agreement between theory and experiment. Also, the temperature dependence could be analyzed. So the gamma value is uh, typically uh, one uh, t, uh, Tesla inverse and the ampere inverse. So uh, this one is actually uh, larger than the uh, other typical materials because in these materials, you have so-called uh, gigantic Rashiba splitting and the Fermi energy is comparable to the uh, uh, spin splitting due to the spin orbit interaction. Okay, uh, here is a list of the, the other uh, materials which shows the magnetochiral anisotropy. So the gamma value is usually very small, uh, 10 to the three to the 10 to the one, minus one. So the reason why this uh, non reciprocal effect is so small is understood in the following way. Because you need a time reversal symmetry breaking and also the inversion symmetry breaking. And the uh, time reversal symmetry breaking is uh, represented by the magnetic field. And the uh, energy scale is uh, mu BB. And also the uh, inversion symmetry breaking effect is uh, through the spin orbit interaction. So those two energy scales are usually much, much smaller than the kinetic energy of electron, namely the Fermi energy. So that's why this effect is usually very small. But I, as I will show you, uh, in superconductors, this uh, gamma value could be huge of the order of uh, 10 to the 4, right? So this is the reason why I got interested in the non reciprocal effect in superconductors, right? Which is uh, much, much more uh, larger than the normal state. I will uh, explain why this happens. So this is a cartoon uh, and uh, uh, this one is published uh, uh, five years ago. In the normal state, so your non reciprocal transport is uh, rather tiny like that. But uh, once you have uh, superconductivity, here occurs the uh, critical current, IC, right? And then this uh, IV characteristic in the uh, slightly above the uh, transition temperature. So then uh, your resistivity is uh, highly asymmetric between the positive and negative direction. So this means that once the Cooper pair tends to form, so then the conductivity or current due to this superconducting uh, fluctuation 
shows a rather large asymmetry between the positive and negative directions. So the basic reason is the following. Once you have a bosonic transport, so the typical energy scale of this boson is a superconducting order parameter or a transition temperature, KBTC, which is much smaller than EF and which could be comparable to the magnetic energy or spin orbit energy. So then the change of the energy denominator from EF to the superconducting gap gives the enhancement of the non-reciprocal uh, transport in superconductors. So that is a basic idea. So in order to make it more quantitatively, uh, we look into more details about the materials. So this is a, a typical transition metal dichloride uh, coordinates, uh, mori disulfide. And uh, this uh, band structure of these materials shows so-called uh, trigonal warping and the ising uh, spin splitting due to the uh, crystal structure and the spin orbit interaction, right? And then uh, we derive the effective gimps randall uh, equation uh, for based on this band structure, assuming the S-wave uh, superconductivity. So the, here is a side view. If you look at this uh, single layer, then the uh, symmetry, uh, in-plane symmetry is uh, uh, mirror symmetry is broken. Okay, so here is the results of uh, uh, ginsburg randall free energy. So here is a Hamiltonian for the normal state. So this uh, sigma is a uh, spin Pauli matrices and the tau are the uh, so-called uh, uh, orbital uh, Pauli matrices. And the in if you integrate over, the uh, fermion diesel freedom and derive the order parameter uh, energy function uh, psi is a superconducting order parameter. So the most important term is uh, this term, which is a cubic term in the momentum of the order parameter. And the coefficient is uh, lambda times B. So this is a big lambda is uh, proportional to the uh, spin splitting, uh, last, uh, sorry, uh, spin orbit interaction lambda, which is put here, right? And then uh, here is a, a important fact factor of uh, KBTC square in the downstairs. So in the presence of the inversion symmetry breaking and also the time reversal symmetry breaking, so you have a cubic term in the representation of uh, uh, free energy in terms of the other parameters, right? So once you have uh, this uh, free energy, then you can talk about the paraconductivity due to the uh, superconducting fluctuation. So which has been discussed long, long time ago by Professor Schmidt uh, for the uh, time dependent Kinsu Randall theory. So following uh, his argument, or a procedure, so we could derive the uh, conductivity and the nonlinear conductivity uh, in terms of uh, time-dependent gimps Randall theory. And the epsilon is uh, uh, normalized T minus Tc. And uh, this uh, expression is valid only above the superconducting transition temperature Tc. And then comparing this uh, first term and second term, so you can derive the gamma value. And uh, uh, interestingly, you can compare the gamma values for the normal state resistivity and the normal uh, superconducting uh, fluctuation regime, gamma S. And then this uh, ratio is basically EF over KBTC cube. So this factor could be million, uh, even more than million. And then uh, this concludes the gigantic enhancement of the uh, non-reciprocal transport in terms of the superconducting fluctuation. So here is a, a experimental results. So uh, this is a, a, a curve of the resistivity as a function of temperature, right? And uh, uh, because we apply the magnetic field along the Z direction, even uh, below this TC, 
uh, you introduce the vortices. And then uh, your uh, resistivity becomes a finite. Then you can define the resistivity and also the uh, gamma value. So here is a temperature dependence of a uh, uh, gamma value, right? So above the transition temperature, it is almost zero. Uh, it is not observable, but uh, towards uh, uh, TC, it goes up. And uh, our estimation is uh, 400. This is uh, already much bigger than the normal state values, but experimentally, it is uh, even more than uh, 400, uh, around uh, 1,000, right? And uh, it continued to go up and uh, typically 10 to the 4. Uh, 10,000, and again goes down. But uh, we, are, uh, we believe that this behavior is coming from the uh, motion of the vortices, right? And then I, I will explain why this temperature, uh, non-monotonous temperature dependence occurs in the next slides. So our interpretation is the following. So if you uh, cool down the temperature, uh, first, you have a uh, uh, normal state fermions, right? Then uh, this uh, fermions is a quantum mechanical object. And then the uh, non reciprocal transport is uh, very small. Then once the uh, superconductivity sets in, of course, superconductivity is a uh, uh, purely quantum mechanical uh, phenomena, but you can define the order parameter. So once you have an order parameter, then it behaves as a classical object. So that's why classical dynamics of the order parameter uh, uh, enhances the non reciprocal uh, transport. But now, uh, below this mean field like transition temperature, your amplitude of the order parameter is already well developed. Then uh, you have uh, uh, vortices or anti vortices in uh, in this uh, uh, temperature regime, which again is a classical uh, dynamics. But if you further reduce the temperature, the, the quantum nature of the vortex motion uh, becomes more and more relevant. So maybe uh, many of you know about this quantum metal or Bose metal. We believe that regime is uh, uh, dominated by the quantum motions of our vortices, and then the uh, gamma value tends to uh, decrease. Then uh, from this, uh, we claim that some of these uh, quantum uh, dynamics suppress the non reciprocal nature, and the classical dynamics of all the parameter or vortices will enhance the uh, gamma value. So uh, this is a, 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 a so-called quantum classical uh, crossover and uh, a corresponding uh, non-monotonous behavior of the gamma value. So that is uh, our interpretation. So after that, uh, we try to explore more uh, globally the behavior of a two-dimensional uh, superconductivity. Uh, depending on the uh, Lash bar or topological surface and the transition metal that should coordinate. So the symmetry are different. So here is a C infinity and hexagonal and trigonal. So then uh, we can derive the uh, Ginzburanda theory and uh, consider the cubic term of, with respect to the uh, wave number of the order parameter, et cetera. Okay, so now uh, this is a, a list of uh, each behavior, but uh, let me focus on this column. Uh, namely, once you have a, a hexagonal or a C infinity symmetry, then the uh, magnetic field should be in plane, right? Compared with a transition metal dihedral coordinate, where the magnetic field is along the Z direction. Here you have a, a magnetic field perpendicular to the Z direction. So then uh, you, you are transition, uh, KT transition, costal surface transition survives because you do not introduce the vortices 
uh, into the system. So then uh, this uh, KT transition survives and uh, uh, this uh, KT, uh, TKT, above TKT, you have a typical uh, vortex unbinding, right? In this temperature regime. T0 is the mean field transition temperature where the amplitude of the other parameter develops, right? And here uh, uh, we have uh, some, uh, uh, we have some uh, uh, prediction for the uh, behavior of the uh, gamma S towards the uh, KT transition temperature. So actually our prediction has been confirmed uh, by this uh, superconductivity in bismuth telluride and the uh, iron telluride interface. Uh, actually each material does not show the superconductivity but by making an interface, uh, you, uh, they observe the uh, superconductivity. And uh, this is a typical coastal surface transition, uh, temp transition behavior. And then which is also uh, confirmed by the exponent uh, of the voltage as a function of the current. Okay, so uh, our theory goes as follows. Uh, once you have a cubic term, uh, with respect to the velocity, this is actually the gradient of the uh, phase of the other parameter, right? And then once you have a, a current I, then your effective low S is uh, uh, somehow modified proportional to the By times uh, uh, current. V uniform is a current, right? And then uh, these modifications of the low S gives a, a change of the uh, KBT transition temperature. And then this leads to the uh, gamma value, uh, which diverges towards the uh, BKT transition temperature with a power of uh, minus 1.5. And uh, our prediction has been confirmed rather nicely in terms of this experiment. So uh, this is a fitting curve uh, with this exponent. So that's why this uh, KT transition can be uh, modified by the external current, uh, superconducting current. And then uh, our theory is somehow uh, confirmed experimentally in this uh, two-dimensional interface superconductivity. So up to now, uh, I have uh, talked about this uh, resistivity in the superconductors. So we are not talking about the superconducting state uh, above the superconducting transition temperature. But uh, recently, I think all of you know about this uh, very famous uh, two experiment. So one is a Kyoto group and the other is a Delft group. So Kyoto group talked about the uh, superconducting diode effect under the magnetic field, right? So here is a magnetic field. So this uh, uh, asymmetry, between the positive and negative current direction will be reversed by the reversal of a magnetic field. But uh, uh, this uh, uh, Professor Ali's group shows the field-free Josephson diode in these systems, right? And uh, it is uh, even function, right? So as a function of a, a magnetic field. So these two are, are quite different. And uh, actually in both cases, they measure the uh, critical current density for the positive and negative direction. So actually these are the very important and interesting observation. So uh, stimulated by this experiment, uh, we developed some uh, phenomenological theory of superconductors diode, which is uh, uh, published in the new journal of physics. And uh, actually almost all the uh, same time, uh, two papers have uh, appeared, and uh, uh, one is uh, Liang Hu's, and the other is uh, Dai Do San's. Uh, these papers are uh, closely related to ours. So the idea is a foreign. Again, uh, we have the uh, cubic term and the linear term, namely the order function of Q in front of this uh, uh, order parameter squared, right? So then uh, we can analyze this free energy in the following way. 
So if you define the uh, amplitude and the uh, phase gradient, then this uh, free energy is given by uh, this expression. So uh, here is a uh, 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 odd term with respect to the Q, right? Q is uh, uh, like that. And also the current is uh, given by this expression, right? So from this, uh, we minimize the free energy by changing, by maximize, uh, by the optimal values of the amplitude. So this amplitude becomes the function of the Q. And then we plug in uh, this uh, uh, function F of Q into the amplitude. And then we obtain the current in terms of uh, uh, this uh, uh, Q, gradient of the uh, phase of the uh, other parameters, right? And then after that, we maximize this uh, current with respect to Q. And then depending on the direction of a uh, uh, current, uh, we have a uh, uh, critical uh, superconducting current density or current uh, density C plus minus. And then this uh, Q factor is uh, 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 characterizing this uh, diode quality. And then the Q factor is represented in terms of this coefficient, beta one, beta two, kappa three, and uh, kappa one, gamma prime. So for the details of uh, this expression, uh, please refer to our papers. But now uh, this uh, Q value uh, can be uh, calculated for the Lash bar superconductors. So starting from this uh, Lash bar Hamiltonian, and assuming the S wave superconductivity. Yeah, of course, the uh, Rashba superconductor shows the mixture of a singlet and a triplet, but uh, uh, we assume the uh, most uh, uh, fundamental and the simplest order parameter pairing amplitude. And then assuming the small magnetic field and uh, small TC compared with uh, uh, this uh, Rashba splitting, then we can derive the expression for this uh, quality factor for the Rashba Hamiltonian. And uh, here is a curve, right? So near this crossing point, uh, our Ginzburg Lander theory breaks down. So this uh, discontinuity is an artifact of our Ginzburg Lander theory, but uh, except that very narrow regions, this uh, behavior should be okay. And then uh, we have uh, uh, this uh, maximum near the band crossing point and uh, decreases as you increase the uh, chemical potential uh, measured from this uh, band crossing point. And asymptotically, it should uh, approach to the mu to the minus one half in this regime. So this is uh, a prediction from the uh, Gintu Randall theory. putting the uh, expression of this uh, coefficient uh, derived from this uh, Rashba Hamiltonian. Okay, and uh, we also calculate self consistently the uh, body of Dujan uh, Hamiltonian and then temperature dependence and also the uh, chemical potential dependence of this quality factor. So the typical value of this quality factor is uh, at most 10 to the minus two. So not, not that large, right? And then asymptotically for large mu, it decays as mu to the minus one half. So because this uh, diode effect is rather small, uh, one percentage, then uh, we try to make it uh, more large, gigantic. So it seems to me that this uh, spin orbit interaction is uh, essential. Then if you have a uh, surface state of a topological insulator, then the uh, spin momentum rotting is a strong coupling limit of uh, spin orbit interaction. Then we have uh, this uh, Josephson junction uh, sandwiching this uh, ferromagnetic insulator. So we studied this model uh, several years back and then we replace these uh, superconductors in terms of the D-wave Josephson junction. 
So because D wave Josephson junction has a plus and minus slope, so then uh, we can change this uh, angle of the uh, D wave superconductors, right? And then we can solve this Andreev reflection problem and also the uh, IV characteristic uh, phase current relationship to this uh, uh, junction, Josephson junction. With, uh, uh, Professor. Yes. Uh, I just want to give you a note that uh, technically the question answer period is starting now, but uh, so yes. maybe you could uh, wrap up in a few minutes and then we could still take a couple of questions. Okay, 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 thank you. But thank you very okay. much. This is a great talk so far. Okay, so yeah, I, I will skip this uh, somewhat complicated expression, but uh, once you have this uh, uh, intermediate uh, angles, angle uh, alpha and beta, right? And then you have a highly asymmetric phase. Yeah, this uh, phi is a uh, 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 Josephson phase, and here is a current, right? And then this uh, IC plus and IC minus are quite different. So here is a counterplot of uh, this uh, quality factor in the plane of uh, two angles of the uh, D wave all the parameters, right? So then you have uh, around uh, 0.4. So this is a huge uh, diode effect for the uh, magnetic Josephson junction. And actually this uh, asymmetry is coming from the uh, Majorana and Andre bound state. So here is the dispersion. Uh, theta is uh, uh, basically the KY, the momentum along the, uh, this uh, junction. And then this uh, asymmetry of uh, Joseph's, uh, sorry, Majorana uh, bound state is a key to understand this uh, uh, diode effect of the Josephson junction. Okay, uh, with the last one minute, uh, I would like to briefly mention about the Josephson effect without the time reverse asymmetry breaking. So the idea is uh, once you have so-called quantum capacitance, you have a, a cubic term uh, of the charging energy, right? So this uh, charging energy, uh, the charge is uh, actually the canonical conjugate to the phase of the other parameter, right? And then uh, this uh, Q is more like a momentum and phi is a coordinate. So I can define the effective time reversal and the inversion symmetry. And then the time reverse asymmetry, Q goes to minus Q because P goes to minus P, right? And then uh, you break the uh, time reverse asymmetry and also the uh, parity symmetry. So that's why even though the real system keeps uh, uh, time reverse asymmetry, uh, you could have a, a non reciprocal uh, superconducting diode effect. So once you have this uh, dynamics due to the charge, right? And then uh, your critical current could be asymmetry between positive and negative. So this is uh, some contour plot in the uh, phase diagram, uh, phase space. But uh, let me skip uh, this part. Okay, so here I put a summary and uh, uh, I do not read it in <laughs> one by one. And uh, let me finish here and uh, I will take any questions from you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor. So uh, thank you very much for that great talk. And uh, I think we'll open the floor to questions. I see a couple in the chat. Um, yeah. Maybe I'll just read them out loud so that everybody can see in case they don't have access or can't see it. So uh, Juka Varinian asks, mm. Does this Rashba prediction for Q raised to the R require 2D Rashba, or is it enough to have a purely 1D system? So like a one channel Rashba. Ah, yeah, yeah, we haven't thought about the 1D. Yeah, uh, uh, but uh, yeah, but basically, I think once you have a magnetic field, the dispersion, becomes asymmetry, right? Between X and minus X. Once you have a magnetic field around the Y direction, even in 1D, the Zeeman field, right? So in that case, I think you also have a 
I think you also have a similar effect in 1D. But uh, uh, 2D, yeah, uh, three dimensionality uh, does not uh, require, you don't require the three dimensionality. But uh, when I talk about this uh, normal state mounted chiral effect, uh, this uh, three dimensionality is very important quantitatively, even though not uh, qualitatively, but the agreement is much better if you take into account the three dimensional dispersion. Okay, thanks. Um, so I see there's another uh, question in the chat and then Dennis. So another question in the chat, um, it seems that tons, uh, Kai Fei Kang asks, it seems that tons of reported Justin junctions have non-equal IC plus and IC minus, both with magnetic field or zero magnetic field. Does this mean that the superconducting diode effect is universal? Many papers attribute such an effect to self-field induced flux by the supercurrent or trapped magnetic flux. Do you think that could obscure the magnetochiral explanation? Uh, nice. so there's two questions, really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, let me see. Yeah, let me understand. Uh, yeah, can I read it in the chat? Of course, yeah. Uh, let me see. Tons of reported Josen Jang has no equal experiment, both with a magnetic field or zero magnetic field. Does this mean that uh, superconducting that? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah, this, uh, this uh, uh, asymmetry in the charging energy is uh, always there, I think. Once you, you do not have a perfectly equivalent right and left superconductors, right? So this uh, broke inversion symmetry is uh, alone is enough to have uh, this diode effect, even though it is tiny. Mm -hmm. And then the second part, maybe you could also comment on uh, the self-field induced uh, flux, ah. or so the self-field effect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that breaks, uh, uh, yeah, inversion, uh, time reversal symmetry. Yeah, that I agree. Yeah, but uh, yeah, again, once you break the inversion symmetry, and then once you have a current, then that gives a magnetic field. But uh, uh, we need to be careful about the direction of the magnetic field again. Right, right. Yeah. Reversing the directions should, I mean, for the cell field, you should know this versus, yeah. 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 Um, maybe we could take Dennis's question. Dennis, please go ahead. Thank you for a very nice talk. Can you maybe go to the, your slide with the free energy in the K space? Okay. With this modified or generalized Ginsburg lambda fury. This one? Yes, I am wondering about the last term. Why your last term in the Q space is just the ordinary fourth power and there's not a convolution on, of different Q modes. So if I would take the ordinary uh, Landau, now in the uh, case, and I will make a Fourier transformation, I will get the convolution. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I understand. So actually here we pick up, we should pick up only one Q mode. And is it right. So that is a basic assumption. Yeah, of course I understand. You have, all, you have uh, many, many Q, Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, right? Exactly. In general. Yeah, the, uh, from the original expression. Yeah, but uh, here the assumption is that uh, we pick up only single Q. Mm -hmm. And didn't you have the extension which uh, will go beyond that assumption? I see. Yeah, then. Yeah. Not then, sure. Uh, that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, we didn't try to analyze this a multiple Q structure. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, 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 you are right. So yeah, this is a big assumption. Okay, thank you. So so that's why we try to confirm our prediction in terms of a self-consistent numerical calculation of the Rashima model, and uh, some almost uh, qualitatively or semi-quantitatively the uh, two theories agrees. So that's why we are sort of confident about this uh, assumption of a single queue. 